I'm back with another educational video. I've been slacking on them lately, so I've decided I'm going to make a pretty banger video today. Today I'm going to show you guys how to build basically every viable god right now in Soul Lane. I wouldn't say every single viable god, but the most viable ones, the ones that you're going to be seeing most often in SPL and ranked in your casuals and stuff like that. Um, so I, I'm just going to break it down really fast and really simple for everybody, give you guys what build I am going with a little, a few optional items, something that you can consider, and it kind of depends on the game, of course, because building in Smite is always going to be changing, and it, you know, it changes in every single game when it comes to counter building, but... So you can go ahead and like say you want to see a certain god you can like pause during that god and you can just look at the build and kind of copy that and go into your rank games and use that and you'll probably do pretty well because i think most of these builds are actually pretty sick right now and kind of fit the meta so i'm just going to go through the gods we're going to start with the warriors the most uh, viable warriors in my opinion of course cuckoo and his build i went ahead and put everything already preset so what you're going to see is you're going to have the relic choices at the top you're going to have the starter item choices um, Cuckoo's an exception. He has a ton of relic choices, so don't get it. Don't get overwhelmed. It's just Cuckoo usually that has all those choices. But um, the first six items are basically going to be like right here, or the first five items because technically you have a starter item. Um, but then you can sell your boots for another item. So there's always going to be six items in that kind of way. Um, so anyway, that's how it's going to be laid out. So for every god after Cuckoo is also going to be pretty similar. So basically, you can go beads, blink, thorns, or sunder on him. You can also go horrific and curse stonk. All of these work. Curse stonk obviously they have healing. Horrific if they have a lot of auto attackers. You can combine it with bead or uh, your blink. I really think that you do need blink on this character. There's some games you're going to need beads just because there's a lot of CC in the game and you don't want to just get insta killed. But I think maybe people overbuy beads a little bit. You can get very very tanky on this character. And that's why I think Thorns and Sunder are also really good, allow you to be very offensive. You either can go Bluestone or Warrior's Axe. Bluestone, if you're just trying to kind of like clear out the lane and uh, maybe either rotate, you know, PvE a lot of the time. Warrior's Axe is good in those matchups where we're going to be hitting each other a lot. So Cuckoo versus Osiris, Cuckoo versus Arthur, stuff like that. You're going to be trading back and forth, getting some sustain. And I actually think that this Warrior's Axe is maybe a little bit better than Bluestone with the rest of the build, just because later on in the game you can go Sundering Axe, and it combos so well with this full tank build. And I think Cuckoo is one of the few characters in the game right now that works really well with just pure tank items for the most part. And the only thing that's not is Mystical. So you go Tank Boots, Mystical, Talisman. You go Pestilence here if they have healing. Then you go Void Shield. Then you go Pridwin. If they are getting crit, you can also replace this Void Shield with the Spectral here. But if they, uh, you don't need to rush it right away, maybe you're ahead, you can replace your boots with the Spectral. And if they're not going crit because crit is actually kind of falling out of the meta right now, then you can go something like a Wing Blade. I really, really like Wing Blade right now. It's a very, very sick item. And... Uh, um, not only just for the magical defense, just the, the slow immunity and everything. It just makes you so hard to lock down in those team fights and throughout the game. So yeah, that's Cuckoo. Those are your options. Moving on. Moving on to Gilgamesh. Oh, for the record, I'm escaping Achilles because I personally hate Achilles and I do not think he's very good. So if you were to play him though, I would build him pretty similar to how I would build something like um probably like a King Arthur or maybe even like a an Osiris or something like that. So uh, moving on Gilgamesh I actually really like Gilgamesh he's very fun and I also think he's actually pretty good especially in ranks so your options basically go beads every single game if they are very very lacking in the CC you can go blink on this character and it actually kind of is nice because you can blink on somebody force their dash and then ult them and chase them out with your dash so it's actually pretty nice but he has no CC immunity in his kit so a lot of times you do want to have that beads I like to combo beads with the sunder just because if you get your item when you're out on the map you can actually sell that and basically upgrade your relic every single time in every single game basically use that item unless you're building into that item you can use that item as like a way to upgrade your sunder early on in the game which is really really nice in my opinion you can also go thorns if they have a lot of auto attackers so that when you dive in you can full commit and just pop thorns you'll do a lot of damage so Gilgamesh is an exception exception amongst the uh, warriors right now I actually like building a bit more damage on him. So usually you go tank boots, but I actually prefer to go bluestone every single game. I think that's the best starter item for him. So don't go Warriors X or anything like that. You just proc it so often. And it's just really nice for what you're trying to do on Gilgamesh. Um, and then you combat that with the Warrior tab. You do a lot of damage early game. You're also pretty safe, especially if you have beads and your jump and your ult and all this peel for yourself. So you don't actually need that tank boots to you know survive ganks and stuff like that. So I think it's worth to go for this more power option. But I still go the Mystical Mail for all that tick damage, especially combined with all your abilities and everything. You actually just own really, really hard and are very really aggressive with this build, but you're also still pretty tanky. I go Wing Blade third item on him every single game, basically. 
Um, sometimes I switch it up and go Talisman there and then go Wing Blade, but I really like comboing these two items on Gilgamesh. You just run people down with the amount of movement speed that you get, and then the MP5 from Talisman Avengers is always, always nice. You can also go Pestilence here if they have a lot of healing, and then you slide in that Void Shield last time. You need a physical defense item here, so you're kind of tanky to those physicals late game. Remember, you can always go Spectral here, especially if they're building in that crit, but since it's falling out of the meta a little bit, maybe you go Void Shield, and if you really need, you can go uh, you can sell your boots for the Spectral. If you don't need that, you can go something like an Erendite. Pridwin is also really, really nice on him. It's kind of hard to fit into this build, but you can sell your boots for it, and that's always an option. Of course, always upgrade to Bluestone Brooch if you're going into the Bluestone. So that is Gilgamesh. Moving on to Guan Yu. Don't really have to talk to too much about this character. His build is pretty much the exact same as it has been. You'd go the Reinforced Greaves now instead of Warrior Tab. But you can still go Warrior Tab if you really wanted to. You go the Breastplate, the Ganges, and the Cad Shield. You get that full CDR plus the Cad Shield to your increased healing, uh, especially when you rotate over those Gold Furies, those Mid Fights, Pyros, Fire Giants, everything like that. I like to throw in a Wing Blade basically, basically in every single t uh, tank build that I have these days. It just makes you very, very hard to lock down, like I said before. And it doesn't really matter where you build it. If you're getting it into your build, it's going to be feeling really good, especially with these full tank builds. Um, then you upgrade to Bluestone Brooch if you're going that route. If you're going the Warrior's Axe route, you go Sundering Axe basically always, but Guan Yu is maybe a bit of an exception where you can go Hero's Axe because you are going to be peeling a little bit more with your healing and everything like that, so Hero's Axe actually works pretty well with that. Um, but for the most part, I like Sundering Axe on basically everybody. And then you sell your boots for Void Shield or for Spectral if you need it for their crits. Um, your four options are pretty much the same relic-wise, uh, Beads, Blink, Sunder, Thorns. Uh, I think most games are going to have Beads and Blink. Um, but I honestly think that maybe beads are a little bit overbought, especially on Guan Yu. And if you're going tank boots, maybe just go blink thorns and you're going to be feeling pretty good, especially with a full tank build like this. Moving on. We have Hercules. Hercules I actually think is pretty good right now. Um, a little bit underrated. You have a few options on him. So you first you can go blue stone, of course, and that's something you can do if you're pretty comfortable with playing with blue stone, then just go for that if you feel like it. Warrior's Axe I also think is pretty good on him. You get enough early damage from people proccing your passive that it allows you to kind of clear and uh, trade with people. And then later on in the game you can go Sundering Axe, which I really like on Herc, um, which kind of bursts people down in your combos or in your ult. Or you can skip your uh, starter item altogether, go tier two boots plus chalice and everything. Keep in mind, with all of these builds, you're building Chalice in either Multi-Pots or Health Pots. It doesn't really matter. It's your preference. Um, that's why I didn't put it in the builds. But you go TP Tier 2 Boots. You build all the same items. Every single Hercules build is the same. You go Boots, Warrior Tabai, or not Boots. You go Boots, Breastplate, Wing Blade, Shield, Regrowth, Mantle. And you either upgrade a Bluestone Brooch like this. You either go Sundering Axe if you go Warrior's Axe. Or if you want the TP route and skip your starter item altogether, then you go Boombas later on as your uh, as your starter item upgrade. And that's uh, the best bet for you. And then, of course, when you sell your boots, you need to go Spectral. If they have crit, they don't have crit, then I actually like to go a damage option here. Because if it's this late in the game and you have a Fire Giant plus your, uh, like, a Brawler's hit... Or plus like a, a blood forge. Blood forge sounds pretty troll, but getting a shield on Herc is actually so insane, especially with this really slippery build like this. Um, I actually think it's kind of fun to try on him, so go ahead and try that out. But yeah, I like I like these items. Just give him a little bit more damage, especially with your ult. If you just toss that boulder out there, uh, it's gonna hit pretty hard. It hits it hits pretty dang hard at the start of a fight. So that would be the Hercules build. Uh, starter items. Basically every single game, you either have beads teleport, blink. Um, Blink Beads or Blink Thorns or something like that on Herc. Or Blink Sunder. I actually really like Blink Sunder on him. Uh, he's very hard to lock down. Unless they have like uh, cripples and stuff, then you don't always need beads on him. King Arthur build, pretty cut and dry. Pretty much the exact same thing as it was before and has always been. And you don't really change this up. Basically, be uh, Blink Beads every single game. I guess if they have very, very little CC, you can uh, skip Beads. But you just have so many like channeled abilities plus so many abilities in general that you have to like get off in a team fight. But Beats is just always nice on him. Either go Bluestone or Warrior's Axe. I go Bluestone on him pretty much 90, 95% of my games uh, just because you proc it so often and it allows your early game to just, you know, like rocket and go into the sky. You know, last season, Arthur wasn't that great from levels 1 to 5, but this season is actually pretty good, especially with Bluestone. There are some scenarios where you can go uh, Warrior's Axe, especially if you want to go with that Sundering Axe later on in the game for whatever reason. But I think for the most part, just stick with the Bluestone. And then the build is the same. You go Reinforced Greaves. Gaia, Void Shield, Pestilence, Pridwin. I love Void Shield on him, third item. You could go Glad Shield here. I personally prefer Void Shield much more on Arthur. I've done some tests, and Void Shield actually doesn't do too much more damage than Glad Shield if you just sit there and hit the enemy solo if they have their first tank item and you have your first tank item. Um, it doesn't do too much more, but the reason I like Void Shield so much is it's really good for your diving with your jungler as well. It gives them the prot, uh, prot reduction. And Arthur just survives for so long in a team fight that that aura, just like casting around everybody, it's not casting, but just being, 
you know, present around that entire team fight when you're just running around doing everything. I just think it's really nice. And like I said, it does out damage Glad Shield by a little bit when it comes to the actual lane. Pestilence, if they have any healing. If they don't have any healing, you can go Genji's here. Um, but I just really like Pestilence basically every single game. There's always life steal in the game. There's always self-healing in the game, basically. And there's always some healing items um, one way or the other, especially right now. There's a meta kind of developing with uh, magical characters going like Typhon, Spear the Magus, now that it has life steal on it. And Pestilence is always going to be good against life steal. So... I also just think it just makes Arthur and any character really tanky because it gives you 80 magical productions and 250 health, which is always nice. And specifically on Arthur, you don't really need MP5 at this point because you have Guy and Blue Stone, which will give you enough. Pridwin, one of Arthur's best items, one of the best tank items in the game right now, so fit it into builds if you can, especially on Arthur. You upgrade Blue Stone always into Blue Stone Brooch on Arthur. If you're going Warrior's Axe, you can go Centering Axe there, but Blue Stone Brooch is insane on him late game. It actually allows you to actually like tra out-trade people late game when you uh, are a full tank, which is pretty insane. Then you sell your boots for Warriors, or not Warriors X, um, you sell your boots for Spectral if they have crit, like always. Or I personally prefer Glad Shield. Even if they have crit, sometimes I still go Glad Shield because this combo of Pridwin, Void Shield, Glad Shield, you do so much damage with this build that if you play the fight correctly, sometimes you can out-trade their ADC and uh, just do enough damage to kill them. Sometimes that's better than just being a little bit tankier to crit, in my opinion. You could always go something like Spirit Rib as well because people are going to be... Uh, trying to CC you pretty often as Arthur, and not only that, but it combos well with the already um, already inherent tankiness you get from your damage mitigation as Arthur. So that is Arthur. Moving on. I skipped over these gods. You could play Mulan and Nike. I think they're both viable, but, you know, I'm just trying to stick to the gods that most people care about. So um, Osiris, a few more options on him. You don't actually have to go beads every game like you do on some other characters, especially if you're going this tankier route. I'd rather have you go something like blink thorns or blink sunder or blink horrific even blink curse donk if they have healing you have a lot of options on this character not only because he's super tanky and this build makes him super tanky but um you just have that low cooldown cc immune ultimate that can get you out of danger a lot of the time so i think you should go bluestone pretty much every single game on osiris i think it's actually pretty nice on him uh i think it's his best starter you could go the warrior's axe route but for the most part i recommend just going bluestone so this is pretty much the same exact build as cuckoo where you go the reinforced greaves the mystical talisman of energy gives you a little bit of attack speed movement speed mp5 which is all nice on osiris into the void shield into pridwin pridwin like i said one of the best tank items and it's very very good on osiris you're lacking C cdr early game on this build but it's actually not that big of a deal especially with Osiris pressure, Osiris actually gets a lot of pressure, which allows you to maybe get those scorpions early on in the game, which actually allows you to get 20% CDR from your blue buff, which is going to carry you throughout this early game. And then you'll have the Pridwin later on. Always upgrade to Bluestone Brooch. You can sell your boots for Spectral, like always, if they have Crypt. I put Gaia here. You're not going last item Gaia in place of boots, but you can throw Gaia into this first item slot and then go Mystical and just push every item back a little bit. Um, if you need the sustain, say you're against like an Arthur or Cuckoo and you're afraid of them out trading you, or maybe you get a little bit behind, then Gaia is definitely an option there that you can go for. So this would be the recommended build for Osiris. Next up, of course, Sun Wukong, one of the best laners right now, of course. So got to go over him. 80, 90% of the games, you always have blink beads, but there are some scenarios where they just really, really are lacking that CC, like I talked about with the other guides, so maybe you can go Blink Sunder on Wukong, I think that can work, if you Blink in Sunder somebody and then Tiger them, you're going to basically one-shot them, uh, but for the most part, you know, it's just going to be Blink beads, so let's just try and stick with that, we're going Bluestone, of course, on, a, or, uh, on Wukong, I go that every single game on him, there's not even... Like, there's not a single scenario where I don't. It's not that Sundering Axe isn't good on him, because late game, if you sundering, if you have Sundering Axe and you hit somebody with a cudgel and you just do all that damage instantly, it's actually pretty nice. But I just think Bluestone is so, so good for early to mid game, and even late game with the Bluestone Breach with all of your abilities that you have as Wukong. You literally pocket every single ability. So the build is still the same as always been, and it's a still very, very good build. You go Warrior Tab. I Soul Eater. I love Soul Eater on Wukong. Some people like to skip this item and just go a different, like a Shifters here into Glad Shield and kind of go that route. I personally still love Soul Eater, and I think it's really good for him all game so i go the soul eater and i go glad shield here and not void shield because i actually like glad shield combo with soul eater because you actually get percent pen here so you can kind of delay your percent pen a little bit more and uh put void shield off just a little bit later so then you go glad shield genji's into void shield upgrade bluestone into bluestone brooch sell your boots for erendite basically i go every single time in place of boots but you could also go heart seeker both are very good i just personally prefer erendite because if you blink in get your combo off go into the air and then land on the carry that you already hit pretty hard and then chase them down with erendite passive it, it just like kill pretty much every single time so i love erendite on wukong and a lot of characters in general the last word that we're going to talk about is going to be tier blink beads 
almost always. I don't remember the last time I didn't get blink beads on tier just because he's another character with some channeled abilities that you want to be able to cast. And people are going to be often trying to interrupt them because if they interrupt your, your fearless, then you're kind of useless. So you want to make sure that you, you know, um, have some something to deal with that. Um, so you go bluestone every single game on tier. That's his most viable start. Probably his only viable start, to be honest. It kind of allows you to full clear level two, do all the things that you want to do on tier. I go warrior tie by every single game on, on him. You can go tank boots, but I think if you're going tank boots tier, you're the biggest pussy in the world. So whatever. Um, then you go these three items, basically every single game, warrior tie by breastplate, wing blade. The next two items, you can kind of just toss in whatever you really want i like relic dagger on him so you can get that blink up more often so you can make more plays and like i said pestilence is one of the best magical defense items in the game right now just because of all the healing all the self-healing and just because it gives you so much tank tankiness right upgrade bluestone to bluestone brooch sell your boots for spectral if they have crit witch blade or ansi are some options as well i like witch blade on tier specifically because it gives you some movement speed and you know when your cooldowns are down you, in the back line you're you know reducing their attack speed allowing you to buy some time so you can get your cooldowns back up and maybe get another fear off and ansel ansel i like because it combos with bluestone and um uh, either your boots or maybe you're replacing your boots with it just it gives you a little bit more damage to make sure that you can actually kill people through your combos and your auto attack cancels so that's how you build tier right now as well so those are all the warriors now i'm going to talk about the assassins i'm going to skip over the guardians today because i actually think guardians right now are pretty unviable the only one i think maybe is a little bit viable is cthulhu and maybe cerberus but um their builds are pretty much like, like they always are you go guy you go breastplate you go void stone and you you just run at people. Um, but yeah, I don't really think they're that viable right now. So I'm actually going to talk about the assassins that are viable because there's quite a few. Starting out with Kamazots. Um, his build may be a little bit different than a video that I've made in the past, but Blink Beads pretty much every single game because you're going a little a little bit more damage on this uh, this character and other assassins. The, the, the general like uh, trend you'll see across assassins is that they build a lot more damage. They're not pure tanks like the warriors are. Warriors can get away with it because of their base damage, their base stats, everything combined. Just makes them really good with those full tank items. Whereas the assassins want to build a lot more bruiser, more like a, like a Wukong or something. So Beads is actually pretty good on these characters. Like I said before, Beads may be overbought in the warrior class, Speed's definitely more necessary on these assassins that you're building damage. So, um, yeah, if they don't have a lot of CC, you can go Blink Sunder, Blink Horrific on Kama, whatever you really need in that game specifically. But for the most part, Blink Beads. Bluestone every single game on Kamazots. Procs on every single one of his abilities and actually allows you to just do so much damage in the early game against their jungler, against their soul laner. It doesn't matter. So, and you always go in the warrior tabi for the same reason. You don't really build tank boots on assassins either because like I said, you're not really trying to go for that full tank. You're trying to go for that more bruiser option and warrior tabi with all the assassins scaling is just very, very nice. So you go warrior tabi into soul eater. Now in the past, I used to say that soul eater I didn't really like on Kama just because kind of doubles down on that healing and people are going to be building anti heal. So it kind of shuts you down. But it's actually insane how much healing you get from this item, especially in lane. If they don't build anti-heal for you, if their jungler doesn't go brawler's first item, you are going to farm with this build and you're going to heal so much and you're going to do so much damage because you have your bluestone, you have your warrior tie by, which is giving you a lot of power. And then you, this soul eater is going to give you even more power and percent pen that you can hit the enemy solo laner with, plus the power you're getting from your one. You just do so much damage with this. It doesn't even matter that you don't have defense yet. You're just sustaining too much. The rest of the build is pretty standard though. Void shield, just a quintessential good bruiser item for any physical character in solo then you go cat shield to combine with your soul eater healing and all the life steal and healing you have in Kamazot's kit there's so much of it so cat shield is one of his best items and then you can round out the build with like an ant so i'll just give you a little bit more bruiser options a little bit of tankiness for their magical uh char characters you could also go like a wing blade there but i think getting a little bit more power there is always nice upgrade to bluestone brooch always that's your only viable or only best real option for Kamazot, so bluestone bluestone brooch sell boots for erendite heart seeker is also very very good on Kamazots. you have the soul eater you also have the void shield so you actually have a lot of percent pen um to back up this heart seeker damage so heart seeker actually hits pretty hard and then you can always go for spectral if you want to be a little bit more tanky say you know you're you're, you're blinking in you're getting over combo off you're going into your ult and they're still not dying and then when you land you're just getting crit down then that's when maybe you want to consider bit getting a uh, spectral but most of the time just going a little bit more damage is actually better so you can actually kill them before they kill you as an assassin um uh, moving on so who is it next it's loki the other another viable assassin solo you don't need blink on loki your engage is your invis or your ult so you basically never want to go blink on him so your most viable relics like i said these characters building a bit more bruiser are going to be beads thorns or beads sunder 
And in the rare, very rare occasion that they don't have a lot of CC, maybe even Thorn Sunder. That would be pretty insane. But you can always go those other relics like Horrific if they have a lot of ADC damage or Curse Donk. If they have a ton of healing, it's going to pop off. Say they have a Yamoja, a Terra, something like that. It might actually do pretty well. So you go Blue Stone, Warrior Tabat, like I said before. The same reasoning for these Assassins. Uh, give you that that damage that you need in that scaling. I like to go Glad Shield actually first item on him. Soul Eater not as viable. You can't really get away with it. You'll get bullied too hard. So I actually like to go Glad Shield. Glad Shield is my preferred like bridge bruiser item for assassins. Whereas um, Void Shield it's uh, maybe a little bit better on some warriors. I like Glad Shield a little bit more. It's just a little bit cheaper and allows you to get that defense on a little bit earlier. And especially because Void Shield is just a little bit more of a nombo, as we call it on Loki just because it reveals your invis when you're near somebody invisible and you have a void shield they actually can see the debuff obviously only like pretty good players are going to see that but that's something to consider you still go that and style, a little bit of magical defense a lot of power so you can do some damage then you go the void shield here even though it's a nombo it's just such a good item and it's good for your jungler as well and pridwin is my favorite item on Loki so you definitely want to try and fit that into the build so that when you ult in you get that shield to chase people out with not only if they're hitting you you're tankier but you can also chase them out and actually do damage and kill them I love thorns as well on Loki because that means when you commit, you can pop your thorns and actually go on them and it won't feel as bad. You go Bluestone Brooch like always. Go Erendite in place of boots like always. Or Hudsuke in place of boots like always. Or Spectral in place of boots like always. Basically the same thing, the same reasoning. Okay, guys. As you guys can see, there's a trend here. So even though there's the, I actually think right now there's a lot of build variety. But at the same time, there's still like trends among the builds and uh, the same reasoning applies for the most part to each character. Moving on to Ratatasker, another viable solo assassin, in my opinion. Of course, it's my opinion. You're watching my YouTube video. You're my YouTube channel. Of course, it's my opinion. Whose other opinion would it be? I'm not speaking for other people. So yeah, Blink Thorns, same reasons. Um, I actually think uh, Rat can get away with not going beads as well just because you're building a lot of tankiness in your kit. The only problem is the early game you're going to have to be worried about, especially when you're waiting to get your acorn because it's pretty expensive compared to people buying boots. So you can go blink thorns, you can go blink sunder, beads uh, thorns, beads sunder. I would never go ble uh, beads blink though. I do not recommend doing that. I think you want to have thorns or sunder to be really oppressive in the late game. So he actually has a lot of options. Uh, Rat has a lot of options for his start. You can go Blue Stone, Warrior Zax, and Tainted. I think Warrior Zax is probably the best for him just because the Sundering Axe combos so well with his Thick Bark Acorn and because it combos well with Glad Shield and it combos well with Pridwin. You just have such a, a synergistic build here, right? So to speak of the build, you're going Thick Bark Acorn every single game. That's the double two. This is his best Acorn for solo, in my opinion. Um, I've been running it. I've been playing a lot of Rat Solo. You guys saw me play it at Worlds last year. I was farming on it. People started banning it from me. And that's because this Acorn is insane with all these other items that you go, right? So you go Glad Shield, which scales off your prots as well. Then you go Talisman of Energy. This is a kind of a switch in the build that I've made recently because you actually use a lot of mana on Rat, uh, Rat Solo. Even with your blue buff, you have your double twos. You're spamming your abilities. Your one, your dash actually comes off cooldown sooner if you hit your other abilities. So like... You're just spamming abilities and you're actually very mana hungry, so Talisman Energy completely solves that. Um, and I also like the attack speed on him because Loki, you know, Rat's kind of an auto attack god as well, not just ability based, especially if you're a tank and running at people. Then you throw in the Void Shield, just combos super well with Glad Shield, allows you to get a ton of damage off. Then you go that Pridwin, like I said, probably Rat's best item, kind of similar to Loki where you full commit and you have all these items that are giving you extra prots and this. It's actually kind of a full tank build. Uh, compared to the other assassins, much tankier. Um, if you really need it, you can replace your Void Shield with Spectral if they have crit, or just build Spectral out right here if you see them going into that crit route. But if uh, if you have Thorns or Sunder, and then you have these items, you're not only super, super tanky and absolute menace in the team fights, but you actually do a lot of damage. Um, so yeah, I would go into the Sundering Axe. Always never go Hero's Axe. But you can also go Bluestone. Bluestone's never not viable, okay? It's always a, not a viable option. Um... And then you would just go into the Bluestone Brooch, like always. So, yeah, if you were going that route, do that. So that was Rat. Moving on to Set. Set, kind of similar build to last season. His build got nerfed pretty hard when they nerfed Berserkers, and uh, Frostbound became just a little bit less meta with stuff like Wingblade being meta. But you either go Bluestone or Warrior's Axe. I actually think I prefer Warrior's Axe a little bit more on him, just because Sundering Axe late game, just throwing out your skewers and just... Hitting people for percent health damage is really, really nice. You never go blink on set. You do not need that on him. You full engage with your three, and that's basically what you do. You ult three, and that's that's kind of how you play the team fights. So you go beads thorns pretty much always, or beads sunder. That's an option if you're trying to you know jump on them, sunder them, and maybe you can full commit with your ult and try and kill them. 
you got to do what you got to do. But you go Bluestone, either go Bluestone Brute, or you go Warrior's Axe and Sundering Axe. Like I said, I think I prefer that more. Warrior Tabai on uh, most Assassins, and especially on set, you can go Ninja Tabai. And it's not horrible, especially combined with Frostbound, just when you get those three items and you have Ninja Tabai. You're going to be proccing your Frostbound pretty often before your ults. Because whenever you ult, you don't really want Ninja Tabai because then you're going to be over uh, over capped attack speed. So you want that extra power from Warrior Tabai. But when you're not ulting, you're just running people down with uh, your auto attacks. Frostbound, Ninja Tabai, Void Shield is actually a pretty good combo. So that's something you can consider. But for the most part, you want Warrior Tabai since you get so much attack speed from your passive and your ult. You go Void Shield. It's a little bit different on uh, set because you actually want to be you want to have enough damage to full commit on the enemy soul laner with your ult and actually kill them. So that's why I think void shield is a little bit better on glad shield than glad shield uh, specifically on set. It's a long video, guys. It's long winded, so I'm messing up a little bit, but whatever. So that's why I like it a little bit more on him. And you combine that with the frostbound, so you can actually run them down, force their ults. Like say you're against a Wukong, he's gonna have to ult on you pretty often if you catch him with his three down. You're just gonna frostbound him down. He's gonna have to be he's like you can just be really aggressive with this kind of build. Then you go talisman of energy because it gives you some attack speed, which is nice on set and a lot of tankiness. You can go pestilence here if they have healing or if their ADC has a lot of life steal and it's gonna be a little bit ahead or whatever. Then it's gonna combo really well with your thorns. And then if you have upgraded thorns plus pestilence, they're just not gonna be healing on you at all when you're diving them. But for the same reason, you can go brawlers down here and then just have talisman down um brawlers in place of boots of course and then spectral if they have any uh any crit merc jungle adc with crit you know whatever it is um brawlers like i said before i really like just because if you have that upgraded thorns which you basically buy thorns on set every single game because you have to full commit as set so they're going to turn on you and you need to be able to do enough damage to them to threaten them to back up or actually just outright kill them so for the same reason brawlers is pretty nice because if you have upgraded thorns in brawlers they're 90 percent uh, anti-heal on their their lifesteal which means they're not gonna be able to 1v1 you as as well as they could before so that's why I like anti-heal on him as well Arendite not good on set for the record because it procs after your settle so that's not something you do want to go on him and then last but not least the last assassin that we're gonna talk about right now actually a pretty dang good assassin pretty good character right now in soul lane in my opinion once again I said in my opinion who fucking cares but it's gonna be Tsukiyomi um, another character you do not blink into engage you do not need it you can just go beads thorns you can go thorns sunder you can go beads horrific um you know whatever you really want on this character you can go he can get away with everything so that's really nice that's a really nice thing about this character and some other characters that i really like right now is that you maybe don't need blink or tp or you know anything like that or maybe even beads um, but beads is pretty good on him just because once you commit to your, with your ult if they sit there and try and cc you and blow you up especially with a less tanky build it's going to be a little bit hard to survive so bead thorns i think is bead thorns or bead sunder is the go-to i really like bead sunder when you go um sundering axe sundering axe and sunder is just such a combo you just one shot people with like a pretty tanky build so it's pretty insane to go that route you can also go to bluestone he has four damaging abilities so they all proc it so both of these are actually pretty good i basically just do it depending on the matchup if i'm against like a pretty hard laden bully and um, my jungler also isn't going to be the greatest into their 2v2 say their jungler might camp me or if we 2v2 they're just not going to you know own us really or they're going to own us really hard then i might go where he's axe. if not if i feel like i can abuse it or my jungler is going to be there often because he's not like i don't know for example he's not playing a late game he's not playing like kali into sir Cat, you know something like that would never be able to fight with me then i'll go bluestone and i can uh, kind of own with that it allows you to hyper farm pretty hard because you just proc it so often on Tsukiyomi with his uh with all of his abilities plus his cooldown reduction on his one then you go Warrior Tabai like every other assassin. You want Warrior Tabai on. Glad Shield, like I said, quintessential like bridge bruiser item for my assassins right now. Uh, I prefer to go that first and then go Void Shield later on. Tsukiyomi is not a character like set where you do have to full commit to their soul laner to actually feel useful. So um, you do not have to go the Void Shield right there. But then you go the Ansile. You could also go Wingblade here. Um, I like that on him. Uh, Wingblade's actually just, you know, it's one of my favorite items right now. Um, but for the most part, it's more consistent to just go something like an Ansaw so you can actually do enough damage to be th very threatening um, throughout that mid game. Then Avoid Shield Pridwin. Pridwin, another very, very good item on Tsukiyomi. All these characters like Loki, Rat, Tsukiyomi that full commit with their ults, Pridwin's just amazing on, and I definitely recommend trying to fit it into your build. 
So that would be uh, the full build. Very, actually, you're actually pretty tanky with this, especially if you go this route and go into the Sundering Axe. You're, you're sitting around like at least 200 prots of each for the most part. Uh, maybe a little bit less magical prots, but it doesn't matter. You do enough damage with the Bruiser items, and then if you have that tankiness as well that I just talked about, and you have a Thorns to throw in with that or a Sunder, it's very hard for them to deal with. You always upgrade into Bluestone Brooch, like, like with every other character. You always go into Sundering Axe, like basically every other character. And you can sell your boots for Erendite, Heartseeker, or Spectral, like always, with every other character. So, <laughs> um, and for the same reason, Primwin's good on Tsukiyomi, Erendite's good on Tsukiyomi because you full commit, and maybe you'll do more. Da maybe you're not going for the tankiness as much, but you're going for the more damage this this way. But you could also just have Erendite and Primwins, <laughs> which is really nice, and just be very good with your ult. Doesn't matter if you're overcap CDR. We do not care about that because Primwin is not a CDR item. Glad Shield's not really a CDR item, and Erendite, we don't really care about the CDR based on it, you know? They we're just buying these items for their passives for the most part, so. That is it. I'm pretty sure that's all the assassins, all the assassins that I want to talk about. And, uh, you know, like I said, there's other characters that are definitely, like, somewhat viable, especially when you come to these warriors. Like, I think Achilles is viable, like I said before. Vamana is definitely a little bit viable and uh mulan and nike but their builds really aren't that much different and uh i kind of just wanted to go over the gods that i think you probably should be playing right now the gods that are going to give you the best chance at winning your ranked games your casuals or maybe you're uh, like a challenger cup player or spl player who knows i don't know why i'd be helping other challenger or spl players try and win but maybe it just makes them better so then i get more competition there we go that's exactly it um anyway most conceited thing ever but we got to roll with it i hope you guys enjoyed this video a little 30 minute build video uh, you can skip through, and you can also play this. You probably maybe could have played this on, like, 2 times speed or 1.5 times speed, and I don't know. I feel like I, sp I spoke pretty fast and kind of covered everything I wanted to. And, uh, yeah, a lot of information in there, but at the same time, just go to a god if you want to. Look at the items. Start building those items, and I promise you, you're going to do better than what you maybe were doing before if you didn't really know how to build those characters, so... Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Got some uh, got some educational content and some some videos lined up in the near future and some stuff I'm working on. Just been a little a little bit busy with SPL restarting and uh, everything like that. So hang in there, guys. I appreciate all of you and lo love you all. Stay safe and healthy as always. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.